Hello everybody and welcome back to Super Tech Services. This is Brian and I'm back with a really long, long, long video for you guys. So what is that video? That's going to be the long awaited how to refurbish a black and white Konica copier. So what you're looking at here is our refurbish checklist that we created here at Supertex. And this is just a general checklist that we do that we go through each and every machine uh, when we get them in and we go through this list uh, to make sure that the machine is ready. Uh, there's an even more detailed way we go about things when a machine is really, really dirty, but this is pretty much our general list that we go through um, on a daily basis. So I wanted to make a video about it and show you guys how we go about things here. And we're gonna go step by step and this is gonna be pretty long. So, let's get started. All right, so step one was a copy, print, and scan test, but the first thing we're gonna do is just a copy test. Don't worry about print and scan for now. Um, that's just something that we do. Um, so, main thing you wanna do is just check all your drawers and just uh, put some paper in all the drawers. And what we'd like to do is just go into the menu and get the camera angle right there. Okay, all right, so let's just go into the menu, utility, user settings, printer settings, print reports, demo page. And then just every tray, just go ahead and just run some copies out of each one. Like I'm doing here and just press start. You can even do the bypass if you want. So you just want to make sure that the copy is uh, making copies uh, fine. It doesn't matter. See how the images kind of mess up. Don't worry about that. Um, I'll replace the drum later on that. Um, but you just want to make sure that it's mechanically working fine, that it's not jamming or doing anything like that. And if it is, uh, you'll just go about fixing that um, right away. So that now that we know that it's, uh, it's working fine, we can go ahead and move to the next step. So let's just cross out that and move on. All right, so next is going to be upgrading firmware. I already have a firmware loaded on my memory stick. Uh, to update firmware, I have another video on that, so you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. So I'm just going to power off the copier, place the memory stick into the service port. Once I figure out what direction it goes. Those things get so confusing. They're just hard to see. All right, so now that it's in, you'll just go ahead and um, power the machine back on. All right, we're just waiting, and those are the shark fins, they call them, so just it takes a little while to boot up, but it will eventually boot up um, into the firmware bootloader screen, which it did. All right, so the firmware's already finished. I just skipped ahead a little bit. Or actually, it's almost finished, I'm sorry. Now that the blue button's uh, there, now it's finished. Now you will just go ahead and power off. All right, and then you're just going to go ahead and remove the flash drive, just like so, and then go ahead and power the machine back on. All right, so let's just go ahead and mark that off as well under upgrade firmware, so that's all done. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is initialize all settings. Uh, this is something that we really like to do when you're getting in a machine um, that has customer data or it's just something you should do. It pretty much wipes all the data on the machine. So let's go into tech rep mode. Stop zero zero, stop zero one. Then you're going to swing over to system one, initialization, and you can see clear all data. So you just want to clear the address book, the network settings, fax settings. Um, it just gets rid of everything and it allows you to start, start from scratch. I highly, highly recommend doing this uh, for any machine that you get in. Um, it's also just good practice. Okay, and when it's done, you're just going to go ahead and power off the main power. And then give it a second or two, and then power back on. All 
Okay, so we're all done initializing the settings, and next we're going to format the hard drive. All right, so same thing. Go back into tech rep mode. Stop zero zero. Stop zero one. Swing over to system two, hard drive, and then you're going to want to switch it to installed. And that takes a second, so you'll press it. It might take about seven eight seconds or so. Just give it give it some time, and it will move over. Perfect. Now this move over, uh, I like to power down one more time. And then go ahead and power back up. All right, let that boot up. And then we're going to go ahead and power, go right back into tech rep mode. All right. Now we're going to want to go to state confirmation. Uh, memory hard drive adjust. Scroll down to hard drive format. And we're going to do the logical format. Uh, there's no need to do the physical, just do the logical format. And then just go ahead and hit start. All right, this will take some time. And after it's done, you're just going to power down and power back on. All right, as you can see, it says, please turn main power on and off. Let's go ahead and do that. And then power back on. And same thing, this will take a little time to, to boot back up. So just let it, let it complete its process. Okay, so now we're all done formatting the hard drive, which also uh, helps clear out the data on the far hard drive. We're going to install the animation boot up screen. This is also something um, like firmware, but it's um, it gets rid of that animation guide data message. So same thing, I have that loaded on a flash drive. We're going to go ahead and put it in. Now this can or the copier can be already on when you do this. You don't need to power down and power up like firmware. But to put the data on, you need to go into tech rep mode. So same thing, stop zero zero, stop zero one. And I'm sorry for the blurry camera here. My camera was auto focusing a little too much. Okay, let's go to system two, scroll to the right, install data, and then you're gonna go just click on movie data. I also have the PDF data there as well, but the only file you need to clear that message is movie data. And then go ahead and hit start. And that'll take about a couple minutes or so to load. When that finishes, the screen will go blue like it did there. And then just go ahead and power down, remove the flash drive, and then you can power back up. Okay, let's go ahead and animation is checked off. Okay, so next is going to be the programming of settings. Now, a lot of these settings you might not have to use. I'm just gonna go through the settings I use uh, for the most part. All right, so let's get into tech rep mode. We're gonna do stop zero C. Right away, sorry. And we're gonna change the administrator password. Um, this is usually one through eight. You can change this to whatever you want. Just make sure you don't lose it. Um, but if you do lose it, this is the way to reset the administrator password. While we're in here, we're going to go ahead and do the CS uh, remote reset. Just one, 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 one. And just do a RAM clear and a server clear. Uh, sometimes there's an error that happens with the CS remote care and this is just our way of clearing it. Once again, you may not need to do this. Then we're going to head over to System 2, make sure the hard drive is installed. Unit change, you can change your settings here uh, as you would like. Uh, this is all fully customizable just um, for your liking. 
So we're just going to leave those on no. And then I'm just going through seeing if there's anything else. Consumable life reminder. We have our set to no. You can put yours on yes. That's up to you. Your marketing area. You can change that to whatever country you're in. So we look pretty good in tech rep mode. We're going to exit out. Now I'm just going to go into administrator settings. And like I said, we're just going to go through some of the settings that you can change or can't change. Just completely up to you. So we like to set ours at 60 minutes, our sleep timer. Um, let's go to date and time. You can change your date and time to whatever your liking is. And we don't really, that's your daylight savings if you'd like to set that. Let's go to user box settings, uh, external memory function. We do this. This allows you to print and uh, um, scan from hard drive. Okay, we're pretty much done there. Under administrator name, this is where you put your uh, administrator name and email address, your device name and email address. Those are the sections there. You need those to scan, so make sure you put those addresses in. Under network settings, TCP IP, IPv4, uh, we have that set to auto for now. It's fine. I don't even have the cord plugged in, but you have the ability to set it to manual if you need to. And then we're going to do email settings. Uh, this is how we set up our scan to email um, settings. This SMT.gmail.com is what we use. SMT over SSL. And then under detail settings, uh, there's our username. Uh, password obviously is blanked out in our domain. Uh, SNMP, you can turn that on or off. Uh, some of our customers have issues, so we leave it off, but on is perfectly fine if you like. Apple Talk, we turn that on. Let me just go back here. Uh, Bonjour, we make sure that's on as well. All these are for um, Apple's computers and then air print that's another big one you probably want to turn on for your customers then under detail settings we have the time adjustment settings status notification and total counter total counter just if you want meters sent to you you can program that that's something we use but you probably won't Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and um, just making sure there's nothing else. So we're going to go and we'll close that out. So under user settings, printer settings, system settings, I'm sorry, paper tray settings. Here we go, auto tray. This is where you can set your trays to automatically pick up paper or not, and also the tray priority, if you'd like it to be number one or number two. This is also a setting a lot of people use. Your keyboard, your measurement, We ours is inch, but if yours is a different value, you can change that. And then auto tray switching, if you'd like your tray to switch trays. Um, same thing, uh, stop printing or switch trays. It's an auto tray uh, setting. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Um, these are just what we use. Like I said, some of those you might use, some you might not. But what I wanted to show you the ones that we primarily um, use. So let's go ahead and mark that off. All right, so next thing we're going to be doing is checking for skew. So these trays can skew quite often, um, especially tray three and four. So what we're going to do is put paper in each tray, one, two, three, and four, along with the manual bypass, and just use letter paper. It's fine. Make sure the paper is nice and straight on each side. And what we're going to do is a general skew test. There's a more advanced way to do it. Um, through tech rep mode we're not going to worry about that right now we pretty much have a little easier way to do it and so we just want to load up all the paper and all the trays 
then just go ahead and go to menu utility user settings printer settings print report demo page and then just go to tray one first start with that tray and we're going to go through each tray but we'll start with one and you're going to want to print three copies out of each one so just like I did there three copies out of tray one and then when it comes out we got a cool little way of just um, seeing if there's a skew on the on the paper once again this is the unofficial way um, there's a more official way to do it but this one works fine so you're just going to want to take the paper out and just fold it right in on itself so you'll see it has a nice straight line there I'm just going to go ahead and fold it in on itself just get it as straight as you can be and then crease down the middle and with the paper perfectly lined up you're going to look at that line and if the line folds right in on itself and matches perfectly I know the camera's a little blurry but um, if it lines in on itself like this one does you more than likely don't have a skew and you can do the bottom side as well and just look how the line is nice and straight so we have no skew there and then we run three copies because you just want to do it three different times just to make sure and if it looks like that I'm just purposely skewing it that lets you know that you have a skew so that was me just pushing it up on purpose so now we'll just continue throughout all the trays and I won't show every tray but you pretty much get the point you just want to do it three times and then check now tray three and four especially tray three tends to skew a little bit more than the others and there's a pretty easy adjustment for that which I already have a video on that as well Okay, so this is tray two, I believe. Just now we're gonna go ahead and do the glass. So you want to take a paper that you know is not skewed at all, that it looks really good. Then just go ahead and place it on the glass and run it out of a couple different trays. Run like tray three. Run a tray that you know is not skewed. And same thing you'll just go ahead and flip it over and take a look and you want to do this a couple times and if it is skewed you can actually lift this up a little bit because that usually means there's a bend in the optics now you don't have just a little you can lift that up a little bit and it usually gets rid of the skew um, that's when skewing from the glass then we're just going to do a skew test from the feeder and once again you should be doing this three times a piece using multiple different trays now I'm going to test the feeder as well these tend to skew as well and there's a couple adjustments we're going to check this one and this one looks pretty good if yours is skewing from the feeder um, there's a little screw here on the back bottom that you can take a screwdriver and kind of turn it clockwise or counterclockwise and it should um, adjust the skew as well as this screw here that adjusts the height of the feeder up and down which uh, sometimes can have an effect on skew as well all right so that's the skew adjustments going through tray one through four test the bypass the glass and the ADF All right, so we're going to go ahead and check those off there. All right, next is we're going to be checking the optics for dust. Um, not so much checking, we're just going to go ahead and clean the optics. So just get you a screwdriver, and I also have a video on this as well that's more detailed. So this is just a quick um, way of showing you guys, but you can also check out my video on how to do it properly. But we're just going to remove these four screws. And then two screws on the left and right, and then the glass will come right off.
All right, so you can just pop that glass right off. Make sure you put it somewhere safe. All right, let's get the camera a little closer here. Now just get you a nice clean rag, either like a microfiber or a nice blue rag, something that doesn't leave any residue behind um, on glass. And you can use Windex if you'd like. You just want to be very, very gentle in this area. We don't like to use Windex, um, but you can if you'd like. It's fine. But uh, we just like to wipe it with a clean, dry rag. Uh, a microfiber rag like this is really good because it gets the, um, the dust off. It kind of attracts it. I like to do mine by hand. My fingers are pretty small, so I can get it into the glass. But if you would like, you can use like the tip of a, a pencil eraser. And I'll show you in a little bit. And just kind of wrap it around um, the towel. I'm sorry my camera was out of focus, but you get the point. There's three mirrors, two on the left and one um, straight ahead. And you just be really gentle and make sure you clean the, clean the glass really well. Okay, I'm going to grab a marker and you can see that if you can't get your hand in there you can use like uh, a marker or a pin wrap it around the towel like you see I'm doing here and you can insert that into the glass like so just like that and get to sections that you um, might not be able to reach with your fingers it's pretty tight in there you only need to touch the the three mirrors there's also a glass, a slit glass on the left side that I didn't get to, I'm sorry. But uh, in my other video, uh, I'll show you how to do that. But um, yeah, you'd want to clean that as well. All right, we're going to speed the video up a little bit now. I'm just going to go ahead and spray the bottom side of the glass. No need to do the front right now. You just want to make sure the bottom side is really clean. And then just go ahead and flip it back over. and put it back in and then you got your screw on the right your little brackets I'm sorry on the right and left and then one screw a piece okay we got both screws in then we're just gonna put the plate back on which is four screws Put the four screws in and then we'll done and then we'll just uh, clean the top of the glass now so now we'll have the bottom and the top clean and the optics will be great that way when you're making a copy off the glass you'll you shouldn't get any marks from the optics and like I said once again be very very gentle you mess up something in the optics and it's going to be on all of your um, copies your print should be fine though Okay, so next thing we're going to do is going to go ahead and clean the print head glass. You want to do this before you run gradation. So there's a little stick in tray 1 or tray 2. And you see it and you'll there's a little hole right underneath the drum. You'll just put that in and kind of clean it. And that's the print head glass. And you want to do this periodically because if that gets dirty, it'll show up on uh, your prints as well. It's really easy to clean, just like I did and then you'll just go ahead and put the stick right back in the tray. Make sure you blow it off with some air first. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and run gradation. So, uh, let's see, menu, sorry, menu counter, display keypad, stop zero zero, stop zero one, back to tech rep mode, and we're going to hit Im image processing adjustment, gradation adjustment, and just go ahead and hit start on the stabilizer. And then the uh, start button will turn blue. Now you can do A4, uh, 11 by 17, or 8.5 by 11. That's up to you. We're going to do 8.5 by 11. Um, 11 by 17 is perfectly fine as well. It's actually probably more preferred. It's just whatever paper you have you can use. 
Now that the button turned blue again, go ahead and type on printer, 8.5 by 11, and then press start. You're going to get a printout that comes out of the finisher. You're just going to want to head, go ahead and place that on the glass with a couple of extra sheets right um, behind it, and then press start again. So there's the sheet that came out of the printer. Put that on the glass. Put some more pieces of paper there to make sure it's nice and straight. Close it, and then hit start. Okay, then after it completes, the menu comes right back, and then you're just going to go ahead and press it again, and you're going to do this three times. So that's one. Paper comes out again. Place it on top. Hit start. And it goes ahead and scans it. All right, and then there a third time. Now that is just, you have two options, which is one for printer, one for copier, and that's why you want to do both. So this is calibrating the printer and the copier. So this will be our th third and final one here. Perfect. All right, now we're just going to move down to copier and do the same thing three times. And what you'll notice is the copies start to get a little bit better each time, they get a little clearer which is the copier just adjusting itself. So this is something we really recommend doing, especially after you change a drum or a developing unit, or if your optics are ever dirty. Um, it's just a good habit to run gradation. Okay, so this is our third and final one, and we'll be all finished with this section. Okay, so let's just go ahead and mark off that. And next we're going to go ahead and inspect the tray rollers, um, what I like to do is just get some isopropic alcohol. And uh, these rollers have like a yield of 300,000, I believe. They're polyurethane. They work really good. Um, but what you want to do is just go ahead. And sometimes they get a little uh, film on them of dust. Just go through each tray. Pull out the trays there, one, two, three, and four. And uh, you can just get the dust off them by just putting a little alcohol around them. Or you can use um, a rubber cleaner if you want to. And you don't need to clean them a lot. Just kind of wipe them down just a little bit. Just to, like I said, make sure you get getting the dust off them. If you're having any jamming uh, through the trays, um, like I said, the rollers go 300,000 copies. They go a long time. Uh, usually your issue is probably one of the one ways um, or a potential clutch has gone bad on tray one, two, three, or four. Um, but the rollers tend to be the last thing that's actually the problem. So definitely you can check the one ways. You can clean them. Um, you could scuff a shaft. Um, um, sometimes we've had clutches go bad. Those, those are pretty finicky as well. But as you can see, I'm just wiping the trays, uh, just wiping them clean there. Okay, just a little general cleaning. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and pull off the fusing unit. We're going to do an inspection on that as well. But before we inspect the fusing unit, let's just clean the IU heat, uh, heater. Same thing with a little bit of alcohol. You just want to clean that inside there, make sure it's nice and clean. That's fine. And then this little section here with the dust, just go ahead and blow that out. You can see there's a lot of dust there. Just go ahead and blow that out and clean this section in here as well. That's your registration roller. 
and you just want to make sure that's nice and clean. Okay, now I'm going to speed up the video a little bit. We're just going to go ahead and pull off uh, three covers here on the fusing unit. I'm just going to lube up a couple bushings as well as inspect the cleaning roller. Okay, so we're just going to move these three screws off the bottom and then we will have all three plates off. Perfect. Okay, so you can see this roller is pretty dirty. It's fine. Uh, it doesn't need to be replaced, but you can see it's a little bit dirty. Um, and you can you can see here these little bushings. We already have grease on them. Those tend to squeak, so we put a little grease on there. And that roller on top, you can also clean it if you would like with some Reverie Rejuve. Um, and then this little black section here at the bottom where all that uh, black uh, toner buildup, we can clean that as well. So I'm using high temp grease right here to just put a little grease in these bushings. You can even take them off as well and do it that way. And that just helps with uh, intermittent squeaking. Now I'm going to take a little rubber rejuve. Be careful, this stuff is pretty strong. And we're going to use that to clean uh, the entrance plate here. Just like so that gets um, a little uh, caked up with toner which can cause periodic jams here and there it's not too often but it's just nice to have these clean okay once that's done you just go ahead and put the fusing unit back in and you're good to go all right so now we're just moving to the ADF uh, the document feeder here we're gonna blow it out a lot of dust gets built up in there so I like to blow that out completely Just try to get the air out. I'm sorry, try to get as much dust out as you can. Lift up uh, any of the panels and just spray all the dust out. That's fine. There we go. Okay, now that we've sprayed all the dust out, just like the tray rollers, we're going to go ahead and just wipe down the uh, ADF feeder rollers. These rollers tend to be a little dirtier because they do feed a lot of copies, but they last um, a long time as well. And same thing, if you're having any issues, it's probably the one ways that uh, have started slipping. But I like to open this up and just uh, use a little alcohol and just um, get these rollers nice and clean. Okay, so just take a rag and go ahead and just wipe the bottom, uh, DFP roller, uh, the top um, pickup roller and feed. And then we're just going to remove any dust or any film off there. White out as well. You can see that there's a little bit of white out, so you can actually use a little bit more alcohol and get that out if you would like. Okay, then I'm just going to blow a little bit more air in here. Make sure all the sensors are nice and clean. Okay, then you can go ahead and seal that up as well. Now I'm just going to go through the bottom here. And same thing, there's a glass here that you can clean with some alcohol. Uh, there's mylars all throughout here that some of them, this feeder looks pretty good, but some of them can be kind of bent um, or cut. And you can just use an X-Acto knife and kind of uh, shave around them. This feeder looks pretty good, so I can't unfortunately show you that. But just look at the mylars and just see if you see any of that's bent or anything. Okay, now that we're done with the ADF, I'm just going to swing over to the right side door. And I'm just going to clean any miscellaneous rollers that I see. Um, and this is some rubber cleaner that I have from Fujitsu. These are the duplex rollers. And these get kind of white and dirty. And I just like to clean these as well. And you can go around um, the copier and go um, and do as uh, clean as many rollers as you would like. You don't have to, but it just depends on um, how deep of a clean you want to do. So I'm just going to open up the little side door here. 
and just any black rubber rollers you can just go ahead and clean them as you wish uh, you don't have to do this but I like to do this because it just helps the rollers maintain their grip and sometimes they just develop this really white thick kind of uh, film to them that um, can definitely have an impact on the copier you might get some slight skewing um, if they get really bad it may jam so just go ahead and and clean them in there uh, really good all right now I'm just doing a visual visual inspection just making sure the roller is nice and clean all the way around And I feel pretty happy with that, so we're good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's just cross out everything here. Now we're going to check the finisher arms and the interest mylar. So just go ahead and uh, disconnect your finisher from the machine. Get yourself a spring hook, a little flashlight. What we'd like to do is just go through. There's a mylar on the top of here that if it gets a slight cut, which we've seen multiple times, will actually cause you some entrance jams on the finisher so what we like to do is just go through with a spring hook grab the back of the mylar and we'll see if there's a a cut in there and that's pretty much one of the only ways to do it because it can be uh, pretty hard to see by the naked eye okay so these are finisher arms that we mod ourselves, and I would be putting these on if they needed them but these are already have mods on them so I don't have to worry about that that's uh, one of the options that we do. I have a video on that as well, so you can check that out if you need to mod uh, your finisher arms. And that usually causes an issue when you're uh, stapling multiple sets. You'll get some misalignments and stuff like that. So I'm just taking a rag with a little of the uh, rubber cleaner and just cleaning that middle rubber um, belt there. And then we're good to go. So let's check off that. And we're almost done here. So now we're going to run a full function test. So what I like to do is put a ream of paper, about 500 sheets, of 8.5 by 11 in each tray, and then a little bit in the manual bypass as well. And we're just going to run the copier, all the bells and whistles, double-sided, single-sided, uh, stapling, hole punch, um, through all the trays until all of them run out. And then when that's done, you're pretty much good. Um, so let me go ahead and load the paper in, make sure the paper is nice and straight. This is the test that will usually tell you if you got any issues because you're going to just be running it for so long that if you got any problems, you'll know. So I'm just making sure all the paper's in nice and straight. And you can run more if you wanted to, but this is a this is a good test. It pretty much tests every tray pretty well. I'm going to load a little bit in the manual bypass. I'm going to take a sheet, a stack of probably 15 to 20 pieces of paper, put it through the feeder. Let's do 30 sets just to start. And we're going to do one to two sided. We're going to do corner stapling and then three hole punch. And if you don't have a hole punch, it's fine. Don't worry. And then we'll start with um, tray three. That's fine because it has the paper uh, type that I like. And then just go ahead and hit start. And like I said, just run this out until all the drawers are out. And you can also run a bunch of single-sided as well. You, you want to do different types of jobs, single-sided, double-sided, stapling, hole punch, um, anything that your uh, copier has, just go ahead and run that. So we're just letting this go here. I'll let one stack come out, and then we'll just do a visual inspection on the hole punches and the staples, making sure that's good. Okay, so that's one stack. Just let's go ahead and grab that. And you just do a visual inspection. Check the hole punch. Staple looks good. Copies look good. Everything's nice and even. That's pretty good. Okay, so we're just going to let that sit until it finishes. In the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and mark these all off. Now, 
these other things you might not do, we add a machine name and turn off some warnings and print and send meters, and we also create a history log. So I'm going to mark all these off here because you may or may not need this kind of stuff. You're just here for the reverb more than likely, but I just wanted to show you our process. And the copier is almost done. This video is pretty much done. So I would like to thank you guys for watching how to refurb a Konica copier. Uh, this is just a black and white. I may do a video on color later, but I just wanted to show you our process. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.